Remember the Reaper Scythe, folks? Is it really two years ago already? Time flies. Anyway, so I decided to modify it, which is something that I did a year ago, but I just recently had a chance to finally test it out. And uh, here it is. So, turned the Reaper Scythe into a War Scythe. By the way, sorry, Jeremy, if you're watching this, I uh, hope you don't get too traumatized by the uh, handiwork on this. Considering that I have essentially no real experience in crafting, I guess it's not too bad. Probably still painful to see, but hey, at least it works. I'll talk about my reasoning for the original design and then my changes, but before that, let's just see it in action, shall we? Not through, eh? No, that's good, no. Right. I threw that off at the end. I could feel that. No. <laughs> That was a good one. That sounded good. The closer you're to the center, the easier it is. So I think I'm just gonna play it safe here. Yeah. Edge alignment is hard with this. There we go. So, curved blade, you can't really thrust with that, right? Well, it depends on the angle. Like you can't do it like this, obviously, but if I, if I change the angle, I can, kind of. It's not as good as a straight blade, but. So my idea with the original design was to see how effective the stereotypical Reaper scythe could be, which is much more exaggerated than an agricultural scythe. It's typically more strongly curved and kind of points a little bit more downward. And, uh, well, it works as a sort of war pick. You can strike with the point. The blade on this one was a little bit too thin for that. I had to actually take off a bit of the tip there because it tapered so much that it bent easily. And with this orientation here from a 90 degree angle, more or less, to an upright position, that's really more what you want for a combat weapon that's what war sides look like if you haven't seen my video about sides you know historical background and practicality and all that i'll link it down below check that out if you haven't seen it yet and uh, so this you can still actually use sort of as a war pick you know, with striking with the tip because it's curved enough that this is still available and depending on the angle, you can still strike with that. It, it's going to be a little bit more forward, but you can easily adjust. Let's say instead of striking like this, you would give it more of a forward movement. So you can definitely use the point that way. And uh, this way, the edge is much more accessible, shall we say. And originally this was a top spike for thrusting. Now it's a hook and an additional striking point basically so this could be used for you know, false edge attacks uh, this could be used for catching an attack so uh, if an attack is aimed at my upper right for example i could catch it like this push it down and then come back up and strike with it or again hook you know the opponent's weapon or limbs or 
what have you. You can also hook with that side, of course. And the nice thing about this being double-edged is that you can use either side. The haft is also curved and in the opposite direction of this. So you've got this recurve going, which is quite useful. So you can either strike like this or like that, you know, either false edge or true edge. You can easily flip it around, no problem. And uh, that works quite nicely. Which side works better? I don't know, based on the tests I've done so far, it's not a dramatic difference, I'd say. I do prefer this here a little bit because this curves so strongly away from the target that you have to be much closer and ideally give it more of a, a draw. You know, I'm gonna draw it in as you strike. Uh, this one you can use however you want pretty much. And um, yeah, again, not the prettiest work by any means on my end. The original looked much nicer. I actually had to take off the copper parts that Jeremy used to mount everything. You know, bit of a shame because the copper looked nice. On the upside, it saves some weight. So now it's lighter overall. And um, yeah, there are actually a couple of started holes like this here where I started drilling and then either I changed my mind or I realized I was in the wrong spot something like that. So if I were to review this, I'd be like, you know, the blade is nice, but the fit and finish, it looks like some noob assembled this in a garage or something. Yeah, that's what happened. Those holes there, of course, don't serve a purpose anymore, but I was actually thinking about grinding, you know, just to get rid of those holes, but uh, have sort of a serrated look to it. I was gonna say it wouldn't be practical. Well, not for cutting, but for catching. You know, for manipulating something, you know, holding on to an opponent's blade or clothing or something, drag them around with it. That wouldn't actually be a bad thing to have some serrations there. And then I made the sheath out of thick leather. Haven't had time to actually apply leather dye to it. So it's just you know, natural color. Anyway, so I like how it turned out. Definitely it was uh, worth the experiment with the original design. Uh, this is more practical for sure and uh, definitely like that. So yeah, again, thank you, Jeremy, for making the original and uh, <laughs> for enduring the pain of seeing how it looks now, I guess. Anyway, hope you liked it. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.